Welcome, welcome. Hi, ladies. Hi, guys. Hi, gentlemen. Hi, everyone who's possibly watching us tonight. We're really glad to be here. We love doing these webcasts. We even started doing a traditional dinner um, on webcast nights where everyone involved in the webcast goes out to dinner beforehand. And that's gotten really fun. Everybody now really likes the webcast because <laughs> we get a really nice dinner. So we've been rushing behind the scenes. Dinner ran a little late, but we're all good. We're ready to go. We're relaxed. No drinking at dinner, so everybody's uh, top. Tonight's actually our very first webcast, even though this is our third webcast of the year. It's actually our first webcast for having kind of everything together. The first webcast we had problems, we had to do it the next day. The second webcast we didn't have some link issues done. So we keep working on it and we keep making it better. But tonight link should work, everything should work, and we should be up and going. So, and we are, and that's the good news. So thanks everybody for being patient with us. Again, this is the best format we can think of for teaching you guys. You can be in your homes, you can be in your pajamas, you can have a glass of wine, you can sit back and relax and really learn. And then you know, and we know, that you play them over and over again and really get it. And it's just so exciting. I just got back from Atlanta last night and I just love you guys. I mean, you're just, you're smart. Your questions are so intellectual. You're really thinking, you're really trying, you're having wonderful successes. You're just not cleaning out those stashes. Those stashes got to go, ladies. They got to go. They're old. They're outdated. They're ugly. And sorry to Patty to tell you that some of that fabric was really ugly, but she brought a suitcase of fabrics, and we kind of cut it by 50%. So that's the good news. But anyway, it's, it's hard. A lot of it's emotional. We know that. But um, it's a good thing because tonight we're going to talk about new, new for spring, and and new patterns and new fabrics and new ideas and it's hard to get excited with fabric that's been stashed in a closet for a year or two or ten or you know whatever the number is but anyway do that on your time when you're ready but let me prompt you to kind of get ready all right <laughs> I have some fabric we were talking about this I have some fabric that I keep under my bed nobody knows it's under my bed but me and it's just fabric that I've had for many years, and it's just emotional. And I've deemed that it's emotional. I'll probably never make it up, but I'm not going to give it away. But it's not closets full. Is that fair? <laughs> Try to go through and pick out what's most important to you. Spring, you know, the groundhog has seen a shadow, so there's going to be some more um, spring. I mean, there's going to be some more fall for another six weeks, but um, that means it's good cleanup time. It's a good time to kind of get at least if you're in Boston you can't get out of your house anyway you've had so much snow so hopefully those in Boston are here watching and at least hopefully you have electricity where you can watch but you are really um, breaking all records ever of the amount of snowfall and the pictures are just they're just too funny what's that oh you uh, thanks 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 okay so we're gonna start traditionally like we always do with questions um, and we'll answer any questions you have. And this just gives everybody kind of an opportunity to catch up and think and relax and do all those other things. I'm going to start with one question that I had emailed in from a lady earlier today. And she said that she wasn't sure if she was going to make it. So the I've talked many times about classic blouse and about how you don't need any interfacing and collars or the front band. Because the front band is... Um, the way it folds and the way it laps, it wraps a couple times, it interfaces itself. In the directions it says use interfacing. <laughs> so she said which one is it? Do I use it or do I not? And it really has to be your choice and it depends on your fabric. If you're using something really lightweight and you can see through the collar uh, to the construction inside, if it's like a tissue linen or something like that, you're going to want to use interfacing. But you do not need it. It's not a necessary part of the construction. It's based on your fabric needs. It's certainly not for construction needs. So sometimes separate interfacings out, whether it is needed for your fabric or needed for the construction and so in the case of the classic blouse it's not needed for construction but it could be needed for uh, your fabric based on your fabric needs okay hope that helps <laughs> thanks I love that question is should I or shouldn't I she's just so confused okay questions on pattern 1350 what changes would I make to get rid of the shoulder pad I'm not gonna tell you I'm not gonna tell you you know, I, I have so many, I am going to tell you, I have so many women who, I don't know why you all have such an affinity to shoulder pads. You just have, and I, I honestly, 
I say I don't know why, but I'm going to theorize. And, and I think it's because they've been misused for so long, you don't understand the advantages of them. They're terribly advantageous for us, especially us old women. They make us look so much better and younger, but you just don't understand how to use them. So, having said that, <laughs> um, I'm going to go back to this jacket here. And it's all about the angle of the shoulder pad. When I, when you have a shoulder angle and you're wanting to put a shoulder pad in, this is the neck point and you leave that where it is and you raise this up the width of the shoulder pad, both in the front and in the back. So if I'm adding a, a one inch shoulder pad, which is what I do in the patterns, then I raise it up one inch in the front and redraw the line, one inch in the back and redraw the line. So therefore, if I'm taking it away, the whatever amount the pattern gives as the shoulder pad that's needed in that pattern, that's your clue to how much to take away if you do not want it. The good news about the shoulder pad is it gives us a more erect shoulder, a straighter shoulder. We get sloped shoulder. That looks old. A square shoulder makes us look younger. Um, we don't have to make them wide. We can make them narrower if we have wide shoulders. We can make them broader if we have narrow shoulders. They are our tool that we can do whatever we want with them. They also run into the shoulder blade. We have a hollow. And what shoulder pads do is they help the garment fall from the shoulder much, um, much better, much more graceful. They kind of fill in the void that's underneath the hollow of our shoulders. So I get that you don't like them, but it, it can't be for a valid reason because they don't, they're, they're inanimate objects, okay? They don't have a personality. I can see where you don't want to go an inch. That's fine. Go to a half inch. But I would strongly recommend all of you out there using shoulder pads. Jackets are still coming with shoulder pads. They come with a half inch shoulder pad. I use an inch when it's a, a heavier fabric and a half inch if it's a lighter weight fabric. If it's a heavier fabric, it pulls down anyway, and that shoulder pad, again, gives the jacket some structure inside of it. So all of those things I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you how to get rid of it. It's your clothes. It's your dressing. Um, but I'm going to tell you, it's just a better look, period. You can't say to me, it looks better without a shoulder pad, because it doesn't. Sorry, it doesn't. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, our group will be measuring for arm skies in our Oklahoma City small group. Please give us an estimate of difference between knit and blouse and blouse to jacket measurements. Sure, absolutely. Now just, you know, I'm going to base this, say, on a size 8. The t-shirt armhole is about 18 inches. That's either sleeveless or t-shirt. A blouse armhole is about 20 inches, and a jacket armhole is about 22 inches. But in any size you go, there is about two inches difference between all of them. So from knit to blouse to jacket, there's about a two inch difference. Now in the workshop over the weekend in Atlanta, I had a lady who um, the jacket we were working on that she was making was a 22 inch armhole. And she says, I don't want a 22 inch arm. No, she didn't say she didn't want a 22 inch armhole. She says, I want it smaller. And you guys know I love to pounce on that, right? So the minute she said she wanted it smaller, I said, okay, what do you like? I don't know. So, but she had a jacket with her and she liked the jacket. So we measured the jacket. We found out that the armhole was 21. And so basically just by taking the shoulder pad and going from a one inch shoulder pad to a half inch shoulder pad, that took the armhole from a 22 to a 21. That's all she needed it to be. So those numbers are very valuable. Learn them, measure them, um, you know, measure your clothes, get them. But there'll be about a two inch difference between um, our jacket to our blouse to our t-shirt, okay? Sleeveless. And that's great. That's so good. You get, is this Rose by chance in Oklahoma City? Was that Rose by chance? Hi, Rose. I shouldn't say that because then maybe it's not. There's lots of ladies up there. Paula, I know lots of women up there. Hope all you guys are coming down for the ETA Dallas. If you're not signed up, get signed up. We're really going to have a fun show. There's so many women. There's women coming from Minneapolis. There's women coming from New York. They're coming from all over to Dallas, exactly what I had hoped for. So we're really going to have a fun weekend. And it's still another month away, so plenty of time to get a good fare on, on a... Um, on American, American flies right in. Dallas, Love Field flies right in. Southwest Airlines. All right. How do I fix the back of ease? 
How do I fix the lack of ease in Zoanne's cape coat? Should I email? No, just make a bigger size. Um, the lack of ease, ease is just circumference. So when, if you don't have enough circumference, you're going to just go up to another size. Now, if that doesn't, for some reason, answer that question, you know, ask something else. Maybe I'm missing something. But ease is equal circumference. Those are synonymous words. So if you have a lack of ease, you just make it a larger size. In our patterns, don't worry about the shoulder width. The shoulder width goes up just a little bit at a time. Uh, the body will get larger. The shoulder width will not. All right. Do you think dresses look better with shoulder pads as well? The dress behind you, does it have a shoulder pad? The dress behind me. This. You know, dresses, we were talking about this again over the weekend. Um, there's three types of dresses. Dresses is a generic term for, for a top and a skirt put together. But there's dresses that come from t-shirts, there are dresses that come from blouses, and there's dresses that come from jackets. So depending on what type of dress it is, if it's a jacket style dress, then yes, it's going to be better with a shoulder pad. If it's a blouse type dress, a shirt dress, no, a shoulder pad's not appropriate. And then of course the new dress that we just put out, this new pattern, this is a t-shirt dress. So it's, it's made for a knit, it's, the base is the sweater set, 195. So dresses is a little, little bit too generic to say yes or no to that answer. It's all dependent on the style of the dress and the fabric and what your, you know, kind of the pattern structure of the dress. Okay? All right. Terry. Hi, Terry. The one day. Oh, hi, Terry. <laughs> P.S. The one-day workshop in Laguna Hills was fantastic. We had a great day. You guys know why I love going to these because you all are wonderful. Love my purple woven heaven fabric. How often do you add fabric to your line? Last night at midnight, I added a piece. <laughs> um, it's not a matter of often. It's, you know, it's all based on kind of how it runs out of New York. Most of the fabric I get is from New York. I picked up some pieces this weekend from Atlanta because he got them from New York. But anyway, um, and so when they call and say, we're waiting on some great fabric and it's way overdue and I'm, I'll have to call tomorrow. I just got back last night and I'm a little behind. I'll have to call tomorrow and find out where it is. But we had some, fab some more fabric coming in. It has not arrived yet and it's well overdue. But there's not a normal they have great fabrics in New York they know me they know kind of what we like and so they'll have a tendency to call me and say what do you think they'll send photos they'll send swatches so there's definitely not a regular sorry you guys just check the website every so often there's a piece I put up last night it is so limited it might be sold out already it's very very limited it's not cheap but it is like an amazing fabric and I'll show it to you a little bit later Yeah, if you're not on our email list, get on our email list because like in the morning, for instance, we'll send out, you know, when we have a bunch of new fabrics, we, we will send out an email letting you know that new fabrics have arrived. So we'll let you know. On the next yoga pant, and we had one on yesterday, fabulous fit. If I wanted to make it more like a legging, would I divide the circumference I want to remove across each piece? Always, yes. Good, smart girl. See, I tell you, you guys are just getting smarter and smarter. I'm just your backup now. Pretty soon you just won't even need me, and we'll retire and, and sit around my pool or something. I don't know. But um, anytime you're dealing with circumference, circumference in anything, a pant, a dress, a, anything, circumference is total. If I'm adding to, if I'm taking away, uh, because circumference is not... It's separated by a front or a back. There's no side seam on my body. It's literally changing in small increments all the way around or gaining in small increments all the way around. I want to duplicate that with my garment as well. Always I want to try to duplicate the circumference in small increments. So anytime I have multiple seams, I want to use all of the seams that I can possibly use. Absolutely. Very good. Can you explain the difference between crotch depth and crotch length? I sure can. But I, I'm also going to explain it, but I'm going to um, suggest that you go back and watch some of the pant webcasts because we've gone over it. But I'm going to grab my French curve over here because my French curve is right there. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that it? I think that's it. In the drawer. Please, I think. Do you see it? Okay, thanks. Okay, so, whoops, sorry. This is 
the best explanation that I can use. And I've used it in class sometimes and it's worked really well. I, the only, I mean, I don't really need a French curve. The only reason I use a French curve is it's a measurement. And let's just pretend that this is your waist and this is your crotch. So this up and down distance from the crotch, from the waist, I'm sorry, from the waist to the crotch is called crotch depth. It's called crotch depth. It's, it's literally not depth. It's really, it literally the length of the body. It's how far the waist is to the crotch. And the only options you have with crotch depth is either going up or going down. Got that. Okay, then along comes this little dimension here. And this little dimension goes from the waist around the rear end to the crotch. And that is called crotch length. It's actually the depth of the body. Because if you have a bigger rear end, it, you need more. If you have smaller rear end, you need more as well. OK. So recognize, and I'm not going to be able to hold all of these. OK. I got a little bit of tape right here. Hold on. So I'm just going to, for this argument's sake here, tape this in place so that my crotch length and my crotch depth both start at the waist. And they both end at the crotch, but one goes around my rear end and one just literally goes up and down. This is crotch depth, this is crotch length. So understand that I can shorten crotch length, which is what I do when I do a dart. I do the dart in the, at the hip line and I take it to nothing to the side seam over here. And, and by doing that, I have not changed the crotch depth. If the rear end, this is like cup sizing, if the rear end does not take up this whole amount, if you have a D cup pant and a B cup butt, then this simply sags down below and that's why you get all those wrinkles below the butt that you don't like. And you guys try to take in circumference, that doesn't work. You try to shorten it here, that doesn't work. The only thing that works is to shorten the crotch length. And you can't do that after you've cut the pattern, which is why I always say to you, make a muslin, fix those darts, and then move on. So this is crutch length, this is crutch depth. Hopefully that helps. Okay? Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead. We've got so much planned for you guys um, that I, we're not going to have time for all of it, but I'm just going to keep going, okay? <laughs> The first thing I want to do is pick up from where we left off last time because I did not get around to skinny jeans and I've had lots of emails on skinny jeans. Skinny jeans are literally just pants that are too small for you. <laughs> is that okay? They're just, they silhouette the body. You could use the yoga pant pattern. You could use the, I mean, if you want the pockets and the fly and all that kind of stuff, I would use 3300 Lana's jeans. And do you just take them in on the sides? Yes. Do you just make a smaller pair? Yes. But the one suggestion I was going to give to you is, let's say, for instance, I wear a size 14. And for my skinny jean, I'm using a stretch denim, and I'm going to go down to a size 12. Go down in the inseam to a 10. Go down one more size on the inseam and then stay with the size that you were going to do along the side seam. That way, if you have to take more from the sides, your inseam will probably be in the right place. In skinny jeans, the inseam can afford to be very narrow and still be okay. So then from there, just measure the thigh, measure the knee, measure the hem of what you want. Like go shopping, look around a little bit, figure out how skinny you want your skinny jeans to be. Um, and be careful because sometimes when you make them really skinny, like around your ankle, you can't get them off your foot. And then the denim doesn't have enough stretch to it. So just be careful of that. Other than that, go for it. Make skinny jeans. And I would, I would probably start with pattern 3300 Lana's jeans and then go down from there. Get a good stretch denim and make them. And they're so much cheaper to make than they are to buy. And you can control so many things. All right. Good. Good, good, good. Okay, so Having said that, I want to mix together our new patterns with the spring Pantone colors. But then I also want to go into Betsy's jacket and I want to talk a little bit about fitting it and making it and showing you options. Betsy's jacket is our POM. It's just 
you know, <laughs> I figured out, I say this all the time, it's like one of my favorite patterns. <laughs> like, duh, I have a lot of favorite patterns. But I love this jacket, I'll explain to you why. But first off, let's talk about spring. Spring is coming, that's the one thing we know. And it's a nice, uh, for sure thing because a lot of you have had really bad winters. We're in Dallas, Texas, and we've had a wonderful winter. In fact, my oldest son keeps complaining, where did winter go? He didn't get his winter. And I said, I'll put you on a plane to Boston, and you can uh, feel their pain. He's declined that offer. But anyway, um, today, in Dallas anyway, it was it, we got to 70, and it's just beautiful outside. I am so ready for summer, it's ridiculous. Um, the spring colors, the Pantone colors, now what I did is you can Google 2015 spring Pantone colors. Now keep in mind again, for those of you who don't know, Pantone is the color company of the world and they decide years ahead what's going to be the colors and then designers, everybody follows it, supposedly. What's really interesting to me this year is the spring colors for 2015 are mostly pastels. They have a few darks. I'll show them to you here in just a minute. Well, maybe you can see that. Yeah, I guess you can. They have a few past. They have a few, you know, jewel tones. But the majority of the people of the country are jewel tones. There's not very many spring colorations, as you know, pe people's pigments go. And pastels generally do not sell well. So let me review pastels. You have a yellow here. Yellow, just so you know, this is our number one all-time worst seller. We don't buy yellow. <laughs> We've learned our lesson. We don't buy it. Pink does not do well. Now, if you do notice, this is a little rosier pink. It's a little rosier orange. But as a general rule, pastels do not do really well. Okay, so then if you look at the Pantones, you'll see a lot of pastels. And there's some darker, so that's okay. But then if you go to the spring shows and you watch any of the spring shows, Nobody did pastels. <laughs> I've never seen such a defiant spring as what I have this spring. Mostly they're doing neutrals. They're doing black and whites. They're doing traditionally what's been there and they're not really paying attention to this color tone which I find very interesting because most of the time they'll follow the Pantone colors and the Pantone colors are kind of right in but I've definitely noticed and you will too if you watch any of the fashion shows you'll immediately notice they're just not pastel so it's going to be really interesting to see what happens to the sales to see if the sales are as strong as the designers hope or I don't know maybe people want pastels but we'll know in a couple months because the clothes are already hitting the stores and we're seeing at least down here a lot of the new stuff is coming in Okay, so along with that, I want to talk about trends because when I decide on those four patterns that we're going to bring out, we I definitely follow the trends. I, you know, I'm watching the trends last August, whatever it is, a long time ago, because I want I want if if I'm going to sew, if you're going to sew, I want us to be fresh and new and clean and right in style with what's going on. Lately I've been studying a lot about clothes and the psychological impact of what clothes have and clothes are definitely a way of communication. No question, they are a way of communication. Now it doesn't mean you think of them as a way of communication, but they are a way of communication. So in this case, dresses are really big for spring. They're, they've been strong, the trend is continuing, they have done very well. There's a lot of women who really love dresses and so I wanted to do a dress that was really stylish. This one's perfect. 40, 40, 15, it's called Sophia's Dress is the name of it. It has a cowl. The cowl is a little deeper because there's a pleat at each shoulder. So it deepens the effect of the cowl. And notice that cowl is all above the bust. So you can have a big bust and still do well with a cowl. What you don't want in a cowl is negative ease because it defeats the purpose of the cowl. It pulls. So you have to have that extra drape to have a cowl. There's a beautiful asymmetric gathers at the waist and then it goes from there. Um, in this particular case, I put the focus at the bottom just with a um, the focal point, but then you can see the whole dress goes from there. Um, in the back, well, let me show you on this one. In the back, there's actually a, a V yoke, and the, and the back is actually lined. And the reason it's lined is because the double, with all the gathers and the twists and the cowl, kind of has a double layer of fabric, and the back doesn't. So if you want to, you could actually double the back, and the double could be as a lining. The reason I did these triangular 
versions here is for color blocking. If you wanted to do a color here, a color here, and a different color here, you would have that. This dress for a little black dress is absolutely stunning. You could do it with sleeves, without sleeves, with a little cape or something over it, but it just makes up perfect all levels of dress. It's a great little black dress, and yet at the same time, it's a perfect little summer dress that's done with knit that you could wear on a beach. It really has a, a wide range of variation, which is exactly what I was looking for. The original pattern is a Nick and Zo, and I love it. I love it. I've already made it numerous times, and I'm all ready to wear it. <laughs> it's just a matter, and I've got a, I do have a whole bunch of knits coming in new, and so you're going to find a lot of them perfect for this dress if you don't have one in your stash. If you have one in your stash, use it, make it. Because we started pre-selling the patterns, the group of four, we started selling them last Tuesday, and we started shipping them last Tuesday. Many of you have them in hand. Many of you are working on them. Many of you have made them up. I've gotten all kinds of great emails back. So this is a precedent that we've never done before, is that we did not pre-sell per se. I mean, we actually shipped the patterns when you ordered them, and it's been really fun for us, and I'm sure for you guys too on some level. Okay, then the next one I want to show you is... Um, 315 and this is the one that's on the cover it's called BCBG's top BCBG is um, a line of clothing and you, as you know there's no copyrights in the ready-to-wear industry has a little zipper it, it's actually a working little zipper up here I love this little zipper it, it does unzip it's a little separating zipper. If you've not noticed, we do have little separating zippers on our website. They're little three, four inch short little separating zippers. With the only thing, the only color, they're hard to find. The only color we had them in was black. This is actually the zippers we sell, the longer ones. And don't cut off from the separating end, just cut off the length you don't want from the long end. So you kind of waste a lot, but I love the little tab right here. I love the way that looks. So anyway, there's a French dart, there's gathers um, in the back you're going to see that there's a yoke and this yoke is double and what that will do is it supports the drape of the front so you get a nice look in the back as well love this top just it's comfortable it's flattering the gathers in the front um, I don't care if you're thin or or not thin it just is really a flattering look so I know that's going to just be a great pattern I know it's going to do well just a really fun look the coat I have on. I'm going to go back. I've got another version of that BCBG that I want to show you. But the coat I have on is 1855. It's called the swing jacket, swing coat. We kind of called it both. We kind of went back and forth. But you know what it really is? It's really not either one. Accessories are really big for spring. All kinds of accessories. Handbags, belts, hats, coats, capes. This is really not to be worn as a coat so much as it's an accessory. So I can put on a base color underneath, which gives me a much taller look than if I had on pants and a jacket or jeans and a shirt. And then I can simply throw the coat on over it and it covers everything up except it gives me a silhouette that is thin and tall. And it will do the same for you. Um, but it's not really, I wouldn't wear it closed. It's almost too much to wear it closed. It's got great pockets. I know you all love pockets. It does have a French dart that comes up the side and then that big pocket there. The flaps, just a little oversized, a little dramatic, meant to be that way. Again, simply because it's almost meant as an accessory item rather than a coat. So you're not gonna necessarily wear it for warmth. You could. I mean, it's completely functional as a coat, but the intention in the spring shows that you will see, you see a lot of coats, but they're just lightweight. This is a really lightweight, um, this is a wax denim, very lightweight. The back of this coat has a nice, beautiful pleat. It's an inverted pleat. So you just stitch down to here, open it up, and then it inverts all the way around, which is what gives it the fullness at the bottom. And again, just a couple buttons up the front. You know, and yesterday I had the patterns in Atlanta and we were talking. The, the, what somebody there asked me, why are the buttonholes vertical? Because vertical buttonholes are on blouses, but on coats, jackets, they're always horizontal to allow movement. And so we had a little discussion and I did them like that because the original was done that. But I speculate the original was done like that because the buttons are not meant to be buttoned. They're not meant for use. 
So if they were horizontal, they would be much more visually distracting as if they were vertical. So because they're vertical, they, they're almost non-viewable. But to not put buttons and buttonholes on a jacket, just make it look unfinished. So there were buttons and buttonholes, but the buttonholes were vertical. Again, not to be used, just to be kind of seen in place. So there you go. It's an unlined jacket. Love this jacket. Just really, really like it, and it's just beautifully done. Um, and I love wearing it. A again, it's so fashion forward to me, and yet it's not too over the top. It's really a great blend. So it's a Florida jacket. No matter where you go, you can wear it. It's not hot. It's not cold. This is another version that I did of the BCBG. And again, it's just great depending on the fabric you use, doubling the yoke back here. You know, sleeveless is really a great way to go. A lot of times, even for summertime, I'll do a longer sleeve. Like this would look great with just white capris. I'll do a longer sleeve, and then I just wear it three quarters. So that's kind of what I like, unless I'm going to wear it with something, and then I'll make sure that I wear it sleeveless, and I plan it for that event. This is extremely quick to make, just not much longer than the sweater set at all. Very, very quick to go together. All right, so those are our two of that type. Um, we have the one then that I had on, and then we have 1955, which is called Jacket 148. Um, you probably can imagine who made that. Lafayette 148, is that a name out there? Anyway, Jacket 148 is the name of it. It is a, a no lapel, well it has a lapel, but it's a no collar lapel jacket. Loved the look, fell in love with the jacket the minute I saw it. Um, simply because we could wear a blouse and the collar we could wear out and yet there wouldn't be the two collars combating one another. It's um, the, the body is the same as many as what we've had. The back is a princess seam. The front is a princess seam. This is a leather that I've done it in. This is a white leather that I've done it in. Absolutely love this jacket. I think it's stunningly beautiful. When I was in Atlanta, this is the piece of fabric that I found. I found this piece and instantly fell in love with it. It is, I hope you can see it a little bit. It is everything, everything spring is in this one piece of fabric. You, you notice the color blues, there's a little bit of yellow, a little bit of orange. It's like all the spring colors are in this. It's current, it's fresh, it's fabulous. It is not cheap, and I have very, very little yardage. I figured I wouldn't need that much because it's not for everybody. It's online now, but again, it's very limited. There's only very little, okay? <laughs> it is a knit. It is a knit. So there's sequins all throughout it, and it's really, really small sequins. So when I sewed it on the serger, you had no problem at all. When I sewed it, like sometimes when you sew with, with sequins, you break a needle because the needle will hit the sequin just wrong. These needles, these sequins are so fine and so small, it was just no problem at all. None of the stitching is a problem with it. It ironed well. Um, I threw a little bit of it in the washer and just did a test sample of a small piece. It washed in the cold water and it, without any problem. I did not put it in the dryer. I just hung it out. What I did is I just got home with it from Atlanta yesterday <laughs> or last night. So I just threw it in the washer and then I just let it dry and then this morning I made the sweater set with it and I just love it. I think it is just perfect to go with a pair of jeans or to go under my little leather jacket which I would wear, this is a white leather, I would wear this with a pair of jeans. And I think it's a great casual go together jacket. Um, the jacket obviously can be made in lots of different fabrics. Do your welt pockets. You've got a great method. There's a method on YouTube as to how to do them. And they're really fun and really easy. Okay, questions about the spring line. Anything I can help you with? With BCBG, do you need a zipper? No, no. You need something to fasten the piece up there. But you could do all kinds of different things. The original had a zipper, so I did a zipper. doesn't have to be a zipper. Yeah, you could sew it. You could, I guess there's not a reason why you couldn't actually sew it right into the shoulder seam. You could do that too. You just have to change construction process a little bit, but sure, you could do with that also. I love the idea of that zipper. I don't know why. You guys, I think you already know I'm a zipper fanatic. So maybe that's the reason. Nothing more than the fact that I'm just a zipper fanatic. The coral jacket, this one, 
is a silk. It's a silk. It's a it's kind of a laminated, not a laminated, just a luminous silk. It's a lightweight silk. It is beautiful. And no, I know, it just doesn't show up on the cameras. You know, it's so funny because when I travel and show people the clothing and people will say, oh my gosh, it's so much prettier. And, you know, I don't know that it's so much prettier because I know what it looks like in the first place. So I don't really get that it, it doesn't show up on camera. But yeah, these fabrics are just absolutely gorgeous. And and if you look back here, they just look so springy that it's just fun. It's fun to just pull the colors. This particular fabric, I, again, part of that though, I think it comes from buying new fabrics. I think that's the negative of having those stashes because I think, and, and what we were talking about over the weekend is we don't even notice that they're outdated because we've had them. So we don't get that they're that they're not in current as fresh. But when you go shopping for new fabrics, to me, and, I, and I'm so used to doing that, that I notice those new fabrics. You can tell they're new because they're right in with the colors, they're right in with what's in the store, they're really right on with the trends, with the trends. And again, I, I don't really want to sew stuff that's five years old already before I even sew it. But that's me, you guys. Everybody gets to be different. I understand. Okay? You get to wear no shoulder pads. I'm wearing shoulder pads. No, we had this fabric, you guys. This was a fabric that I, we had this, remember, last summer? We had it this color. We had it in several different colors. I just cut a piece off and saved me a piece because I knew, I loved it, and I knew I was going to find something for it. So I don't have it anymore, but we'll have some great fabrics coming. I mean, truly, there's some great knits that I've got coming. And I only buy good stuff. You all know that, right? <laughs> all right. Oh, you know what? I don't know the fabric content. That's a... Oh, yes, I did. I burned it. No, I didn't burn it. I don't know. I want to say it's a cotton. It's so light. I mean, it is so lightweight. I'm tempted to take it off the mannequin because the whole thing, it's just like nothing. It's really, really light. But I don't know the content. I'm not sure of it. If there's any left... I will, um, I'll find out the content. But if you, f if you wait until we find out the content, you might not get it. <laughs> so I don't know how to tell you on that. <laughs> it's really, there's not a lot. The black, dress. the black dress. That's our Black Perfection. The um, fabric that, oh, I'm sorry, not Black Perfection. It's Black Knit Number One. Black Knit Number One. Because I wanted a really lightweight knit that had great drape to it. So it's Black Knit Number One is what I used. The dress? Can, well, I can show you, yeah, I can show you on this one because you'll be able to see it a little bit better. How's that? Let me just put this down. This one's kind of tan colored, so you'll be able to see these details a little bit better. Okay, so I'll turn this around. And now this particular, you see there's like a little, this is identical. They go up to a little V there. There's actually darts in the back of the dress. The reason for the darts is because um, the dress has got the gathers in the front and you want the gathers to naturally flow and naturally release themselves. So therefore, you can't take more out of the sides because if you take too much out of the sides, then the gathers won't flow. So that's why the darts are used in the back. Even though it's a knit, darts are used so that the same thing I kind of talked about earlier, so that you're taking those small increments out all the way around and you're allowing the, the gathers to flow like they need to. So this is double, this is double, this could be double if you wanted to line the back, but it all folds inside. There's a, um, a facing on the inside of this that finishes off the neck edge and then goes down, oh I don't know, it goes down below your bra so that it just creates a double layer back in here. So that whole back is faced and also what that does is it balances out the cowl in the front. 
So, like I said, it's just a beautiful dress. I mean, it, I think one thing I look for more and more is I I am really enjoying giving you beautiful details as far as how the patterns go together because you're getting the fit, you're getting all that stuff. And I love the way they're constructed. You'll find a couple things. The way the facing is done on that, um, the way the whole cowl is faced, the whole facing comes in low. You can put a little weight on the inside if you want to. It's just made beautifully. The whole way the pattern is made and goes together is really, really nice. And I think as you work with it, you'll really notice it. Okay. Um, somebody asked me earlier, is it the cowl of the 550? Is it just same? It's not the same. It's it's done in several different ways. The facing is done different. There's a pleat at the shoulder, so it's broader and deeper. Um, I didn't just do the same exact cowl. I wouldn't have done that simply because I wanted to offer you up something different. Okay? All right. Of this jacket? How did I determine it? You guys remember, I'm not the designer. <laughs> I know when I like what I like. The question was, how did I determine the neck of the jacket? I know what I like when I like when I see it. I'm not good at creating it, but I darn well know it when I see it. So that's why I shop. I shop and I shop and I shop, and I'm, I feel like I'm your personal shoppers for all of you because I like to shop and I shop simply to find great stuff and when I find it I know it and so then I don't try to say oh it'd be better if it did this great is great and if it's not great I don't do it if it's great then I do it and I do it exactly like it is is that a decent answer I had a lady a little while ago who said how disappointed she was in me that that she found somebody told her I didn't I didn't do the design that I actually copied them out of ready to wear and she wrote me an email and said she was so disappointed I'm sorry I mean I, I, you made me out to be something I'm not but the reality is I'm not a designer but I'm a really good pattern maker and I can copy stuff I see and I recognize when I like it and I recognize when it's good because I've been doing it a long time that's all okay so can we move on to Betsy's jacket are we good Okay, because I, I really like this jacket. Remember, it's one of my favorites. Okay, so I really like this jacket. I, I'm going to show you several versions, but I'm going to kind of use this one as a, as a mainstay. Um, Betsy's jacket is a Armani. Betsy owned the jacket. This is the first pattern that I actually named after a person, and I named it her because she spent $2,500 on the original jacket, and she was nice enough to actually loan it to me. She had to loan it to me because the details of this jacket are, um, they're not something I could just have copied out of a store. They're, there's too many details, and I'll, I'll try to explain to you. I made the first one that I made exactly like the one that was, that she had bought. It was a red, beautiful wool, beautiful wool. I found the most beautiful red I could, and this is what you know mine the original one looked like so I want to point out to you the reason I fell in love with it and again this was an Armani Armani to me is always pushing the envelope and certainly not on everything but for this one he was if you notice I've got lint on here sorry about that it is a princess seam I prior to this jacket had never seen a princess seam and a raglan combined I'd never seen that and if you think about it those are two lines that generally um, conflict, so they're not usually in the same garment. Armani, what he did, this is center back seam, so he created the raglan, and then he, remember by definition, a princess seam is simply when the bust start is moved to the upper portion of the garment, the waist start is in the lower portion of the garment, and they are combined in a seam line. But that seam line can start at the armhole, the shoulder, the neckline. Well, we know that to be the definition, but almost all designers out there just repeatedly it either goes to the shoulder seam or the armhole. Rarely does it go to the neckline, and rarely is it designed to where it duplicates the shaping of the raglan. So the back, and I hope you can see the, 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 the details of that back, they're just stunning. In fact, here, I've got this one. I brought a couple out because over the years I've done some different things with them. 
Okay, there you go. That's in leather, and it's in two different kinds of leather. So I mixed a textured leather with a smooth leather to give it different um, to give it different effects. Okay, but I love the back of this jacket. It's just absolutely stunning. Then the front of this jacket. Well, I guess I can show you this one too. The, and again, I, I combine it texture versus non-texture just so you can put it wherever you want. So this is a raglan sleeve. Again, the princess seam, if you notice, comes in into the neckline. And then this is a shawl collar. Now Armani is famous for his bias under collar. And if I show you that on this little jacket here, it is an eclipsical little piece bias. And what it does, because it's kind of stretched into the place it goes, it has a tendency to do the roll really beautifully. And that collar rolls over it, so he doesn't do typically what's an under collar. He does this elliptical little piece of fabric that acts, it is the under collar, but it does a unique job in how it pulls the collar back over itself. Okay, so it is a princess seam in the front, it is a princess seam in the back, and those the princess seams just mirror mirror image the shape of the raglan and it's a raglan seam a simple little zip up it is lined on the inside i'm going to show you a case so you don't have to line it but i want to go through kind of fitting it in general we had um cheryl yesterday at the workshop brought betsy's jacket to have it fitted to her and we made very few changes so i want you to understand when you go into this pattern there's very few changes now the reason I needed to borrow this pattern was because the pattern shapes themselves are very unique. <laughs> very unique. Okay, so I'm going to kind of start with the back just so you get a, sh a look at what the back, what the pieces look like as you get into it. Because already this is the beginning of the month. We've sold a lot of these jackets. We've shipped a lot of these jackets. For the POM members, we'll ship them tomorrow and you'll have them in a couple days. But as pattern of the months go, we have sold a tremendous amount of this pattern already. So I want you to understand it, and I want you to have success with it. All right, that's the center back. That's what it's shaped like. No big deal. You sew the center back together. This is the jacket back, and they go like that. Pretty easy, right? Okay, there's your lap, and there's a the seam allowance. Now, when you look at the neckline, and you look at how many little seams make up the neckline, it's very important when you are cutting and sewing that you make sure each of those pieces are the correct size because you can see if you're just a little bit off either direction the neckline will either be way too small or way will change the shape of the size so when you are cutting those be careful to make each of those the correct size okay then you have the side panel that goes there now if you notice we're, we're making the sleeve so that's when this is a sleeve and this portion actually sews to this portion. So you kind of make it in a U and you sew it into the side panel. It's really easy. The instructions are there. The only piece I really want to caution you of and then okay it goes along to the front and then it goes along to this is the very front and it's marked on here center front but what she did is she flipped this piece around I don't say that to embarrass her I say that so that nobody else will do it you can see those pieces fit like that together this is actually a shawl collar and this is what comes around and sews to the back and that makes the lapel but many people look at the collar the shape of the collar and they think that's like the bus point or something so <laughs> just I just want to point you out the shape of the patterns the bus points marked way down here this is just the lapel and the collar and it flips back like that and it's marked center front that's where the zipper goes in it's, it's really a very easy jacket to make um, read through your instructions so on this one in particular I want to show you because what I did with this this is called this is 100% cotton. I love this fabric and I've been waiting for something perfect to make it in. This is it. It's called a brown beige fleece-like? What do I call it? Do you know? Brown? Thank you. A fleece-like knit. It's just a beautiful texture. What's the price of it? $24.99. It's 100% cotton. It's absolutely gorgeous is what I did this in. So what this really feels like is a sweatshirt except it's a little more refined than a sweatshirt. I'm going to show you the back of this. 
because it's got those beautiful lines. I did it exactly like Betsy's jacket. You can see all the lines in there. It hangs gorgeous, the fabric itself. So the changes I made yesterday when she put the jacket on is on this one I took away all the shoulder pads. Remember you guys love to take those shoulder pads away? So when you take the shoulder pads away all you have to do is change the seam. This is the seam right there that goes over the shoulder. That's the only thing you need to change right there and just pin out. You can put it on you could just throw together a muslin and whatever's extra in there, just take it away. It won't affect Armani. One thing Armani is very good at doing is raglans because you notice this is a raglan and you don't have all that extra. And that's because look at the pitch of the sleeve that is there. And that pitch is amazing because it still gives you mobility, but it doesn't give you all that extra. And then coupled with the B, C, and D cup, the side panel here is the B, C, and D cup. Okay, then there's just a real slight, like I said, it's a shawl collar, it turns back, it's absolutely beautiful. So now what I did is I decided again, I didn't want any lining, I wanted a very casual jacket, almost like throwing on a sweatshirt, but I wanted the sweatshirt to have this beautiful shaping to it. So I took away the shoulder pad, I pinned it out here, and then I cut still the front facing, and I cut the under collar. And then I surged around each piece. Mine's a, this is a brown, but you can see that it's, it actually could be two-sided because the inside's just beautiful. But I surged around each piece, and then I went ahead and constructed it just like normal. The only thing I did when it was finished, I put the zipper in, down the front, et cetera, et cetera. And then I did, and I, I'm sure you can't see it, but there's just top stitching that starts up here because what it did is it's holding the facing in. So I put the zipper in first and then I stitched up here. I stitched all the way around, all the way around here and then back down this princess seam because that's what's holding that facing in place. So when you open it, there's no loose parts, there's no moving parts, nothing. And everything was done on the machine. I hemmed the sleeves because again, you don't have any lining to do that. I just literally top stitched it on the machine. This has a front facing so there's a seam here and then once you make the seam, the rest of it I just did with a top stitch. So it's all top stitch. The top stitch is, so, is showing. Um, I did it in a black top stitching just to kind of accent the brown. Either way, you know, it wouldn't have mattered. But I just love it. And I'm telling you, after I was done with it, I put it on. And it just literally, it feels like a sweatshirt, but it's so good looking. <laughs> it's so much better than a sweatshirt. So I just really like the whole concept of it. And that, again, is your unlined version. Separating zipper down at the bottom. And when you wear the jacket, I would recommend you want to wear it closed. You can, not that you can't wear it open, but when it's closed, it has such beautiful shaping all through the back and everything is shaped so well. And don't close it too much up here. Just right below the bust a little bit. Halfway between the waist and the bust is a great place to stop. And then just wear something really simple underneath. All right? Okay, but not a lot of issues for fitting at all. Um, again, through the shoulder area, sometimes right in through here, in this princess seam, you'll need to take out, but that's piece of cake also. Um, if you're real short, you'll have to take some length out of the waist, but most of the time you can just drape it to kind of shape you so that you don't have to lengthen or shorten. You won't have to change anything up in here. That's beautiful as well. No, this is a knit. This is a knit. But I I would do a muslin because I don't it doesn't fit like a knit. I'm just using the beauty of the knit because I love the fabric and I wanted like a little sweatshirt type jacket. I didn't want if you go back to this look, this is Betsy's jacket and it's a beautiful casual look. I wear it with jeans, I wear a little t-shirt underneath. This is a hand dyed fabric. Um, that I got years ago. It's a great look. It's a casual look, but this is much more, even more casual, even so. So this is really what I wanted. I really wanted a uh, sweatshirt type effect, but I wanted shape to the sweatshirt, if that makes sense. And this is a perfect pattern to do that with. Okay. Yeah, when you, when you take, if this is not right, Okay, so, you know, part of me says you don't need a muslin, and you know that the 99% of me says you need a muslin. 
because this you don't need a muslin for. You can shape that without making a muslin, but if the jacket is not the right cup size, you'll make little alterations in through here. You'll make little darts that are two-ended here if you don't choose the right cup size, and that's a really resounding common thing that I find when I'm fitting women, period, with the jackets, is they're choosing a cup size that matches their bra, and I don't doubt that it matches their bra, but I had a lady the other day that I swear to you she was a double D and she said she was a B cup. There's just not a prayer. So I said she wasn't a B and we won't get into that. But, you know, sometimes we're not in the right fitting bra. Is that fair? The way to tell if it's the right cup size or not is if I've chosen the cup size that I think is right and then I have gapping in through here, extra fabric here and it's not here, then clearly I can make a dart here and I can take away fabric and if I can make a dart here, then clearly the dart that was there that was moved up to here wasn't enough. So I'm not in the right cup size. That's my telltale sign. Okay? It's a raglan shoulder pad. You could just put it in. It, it has a raglan shoulder pad. I think in the pattern it's a half an inch. So use the half an inch, put it in, and then again, just don't put it out too far because what you want is the advantage of a shoulder pad is it'll balance your hips. Um, but you don't want it too broad to where it looks abnormal. You, you want it to look n natural as if it's your shoulder. So just put it to where um, generally when you go up from the side seam, that's where the shoulder line should hit. So just use a raglan pad and just kind of put it under there. I don't know if I have a raglan pad in here. No, we do not sell raglan pads. We don't have them. We don't have them. Okay. All right. We have time for a trivia question. Oh, okay. We do have one more question. Oh, my top? That's okay. What's the question then? What was the question? How did I determine how low I wanted the neckline to go? Okay. No, it's just a choice. I mean, it's just off necklines I saw. I actually wear a neckline, a necklace with this a lot, and I made it just below the necklace, so the necklace and the um, neckline wouldn't interfere with one another. That's how I chose it. I chose it by my necklace. It wasn't that scientific. <laughs> but anyway, when you go to do a coat like this, you guys, it's really fun to keep the colors underneath monochromatic, and you can see it really becomes an accessory. It's just a really fun coat. I really, I, I actually have another that I'm making. It's fabric that I got in Atlanta. I did buy a little bit extra. There's not a lot of it either, but it's, oh my gosh, it's an amazing fabric. It's just amazing. Sometimes I see fabrics and my hands start flapping and my heart starts beating and I have to like just take a deep breath because it's so outstanding. It's just incredible. We went to Gail Kay's for those of you in Atlanta and um, it's just a pretty stuff. Really, he starts pulling stuff out from, you know, the bottom of the pile. You'll like this. And I'm like, ah, you're right. <laughs> but anyway, it was a lot of fun. You can make this longer too, yes, but just be careful not to go too long because it's not the style of the jacket. So I would say, I would caution you against doing that. So if you have extra fabric on the side and have to take a larger dart, does that mean you need to go up a cup size? It does. It sure does. If you can literally, on the side here, pinch out a dart and taper to nothing to the front princess seam and nothing to the back princess seam, you have to do it on both the front and the side, you know, the front and the back. That's where your dart is coming from. That means that you could have made a larger cup size and you wouldn't have had to make that dart or else that dart would have been smaller. Yes, that is an indication. That's why... Um, you know, I don't know what cup size you are. I don't measure you. I, I don't even get into any of that. But when I see a woman who has on a B cup and she's got all this gapping over here, then she could use a larger cup size, which is what I tell her. You could just use a larger cup size and you'll have less alterations. That's really the name of the game. If you have sloping shoulders, should you use a thicker shoulder pad? I think you should. Shoulder pads are, you know, the joke I always say, what do people over 50 use for birth control? You know, nudity. So to me, the whole goal in clothing is to make us look better than we are. Um, now, some people don't agree with that, but 
I don't want to run around naked, okay? I want clothing. And if I'm going to do it, I'm going to have it make me look better than I am naked. How's that? So I would use shoulder pads, and yes, if you're really slopey shoulders, those shoulder pads can, can bring you up, make you look younger. Okay, last question. The raglan, yeah, the raglan, what the raglan is, is let me kind of make one for you. A raglan, this is a regular shoulder pad, and a raglan is going to have those two shoulder pads kind of put together, and then it has a little bit of an angle to it. So let's just say if I was making on this, it would be made like that, but all of this would be cut away because it's really just the arch of actually the natural shoulder. So it kind of is like a little cup, if that makes sense. It's almost like that. Let me pin that so you can kind of get an idea what it looks like. And yes, I can put it on the inside. Now I took in this one, I took away for a shoulder pad. But that's kind of what it looks like. So forget that it's so big. But I'm going to put it in that, and, and that's what it looks like. You see, it just gives it a little more, really, support for the rest of the garment. All right, does that kind of help? That's pretty makeshift, but um, it'll kind of be a little, um, it, you know, it really looks like a bra cup. It kind of looks like a bra cup because the shoulder goes in the hollow. It fits right over the shoulder. It, it, the tension is to mold right over the shoulder so that the jacket gracefully and it, and it gives support all in this area right here. So that's the purpose of the shoulder pad. I do have really square shoulders so I can kind of get away without a shoulder pad or I felt like in this one I could even though it was unlined I decided I didn't want one. You guys are really convincing me. No, I'm kidding. All right, so we're okay with trivia or we're working on trivia or maybe trivia. Okay, we're going to ask the trivia question, so check your chat box. Remember that this is, um, this is, gives a $50 gift certificate away, $50 gift certificate to the winner, and you guys, tomorrow is the last day for our spring pattern pre-sale. When you do the pre-sale, the way we did it is we did four patterns, really for the price of two because they're $34.99, two patterns would be $30. So they're $34.99 for all four, um, and then $5 shipping. And they, so it's the best time to get them. Even if you don't like every one or you don't think you'll make every one, I would get them because I'm gonna show you how cute they are during the year. And you're gonna say, gosh, I wish I'd had them. Um, so that ends tomorrow. So tomorrow, or not, tomorrow night. But you, you have another day. So that pre-sale, it's all for the $34.99 and then $5 shipping. comes out to $39.99. Our Betsy's jacket is the pattern of the month for February, so you've got, et cetera, time on your hand. We are not going to have a webcast in two weeks because we are going to be in Puyallup. So we will be back a month from today, which is March 9th, is when we will be back, and we'll come back with the POM for March is what we'll come back for. We are trying to do a live stream from Puyallup for you guys. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to pull this off because we don't know the internet speed of what's available. We're working on it. But we would really think it'd be fun to, I don't know, do some fun live things there at the show. So we'll see. We'll, we'll broadcast through YouTube. We'll let you know about it. We're just working on it. If you don't hear about it, then you know that we couldn't do it. But we're trying. We're drawing. We think it'd be fun for all of you to come to Puyallup with us. All right? Okay. So get your spring tones. Clean out those closets. Replace it with new stuff. If you like the fabric that's in my little sequiny girl, don't wait because it's going to be gone. Do we have a winner? Oh, I have to ask the questions? Oh, so <laughs> oh we already have a winner. See, he doesn't need me. He says, he, you know, he doesn't need me. We, the question is, the question is, how many years has Silhouette Patterns been a pattern company? And this is our 18th anniversary, February 2015. We are 18 years old. So happy birthday to us. <laughs> Silhouette Patterns, happy birthday to us. And we wouldn't be us 
if it wasn't you all. So happy birthday to you all. Thank you for being here all these years. We have almost 6,000 fans. We have over 6,000 fans now on YouTube. It's a great means of communication. It's un, you know, unfiltered. It's really nice. Check out the code on Facebook because that's where you can get a discount on Pattern 1600. With the Facebook code, you can get it for $9.99. So, are we good? I think that means it's time to say happy sewing. Happy sewing, ladies. Now, also, you know, because we're not going to be here, we have videos planned for you on YouTube. So next Monday, we're going to do a video. The following Monday, we're going to do a new video. The following, we've got some great new lineup of videos. So watch your YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube, and you'll get notice that we're going to have them. So we're not going to be live, but we're still going to be here. We're still going to be here, haunting you. Happy sewing. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Bye.